All right, so you go and buy yourself a new car, and what do you want to do? You want to modify it. You want to make it look sick. So you go and buy yourself a new set of wheels, and now it doesn't even look sick. It looks, looks off because it's too far off the ground. So what do you do? You go buy yourself a set of springs or even coilovers. It's going to look, it's going to ride like, like a dream. No, it looks like, now it rides even like shit, even worse. It just bumps cars all over the road because you need a wheel alignment. And then on the factory, camber arms, control arms, just, there's only a certain degree that they can adjust because it's just meant for stock height. That's what we're gonna talk about today. In this week's vlog, we're gonna work on a Ramos' car just waiting for him to show up. He lowered his, his 370, you guys seen it in some of my previous vlogs. It looks really nice now, but the thing is the car ride, not very good, it just, it's all over the place. So he bought a whole bunch of camber arms, control arms, traction control arms, just like I did for the GTR, but it's, he went with Z1, I think Z1, I'll confirm with him, uh, so that he can do all the fine tune and he can tune his suspension so it goes the way he wants it. All right guys, so so far, Ramos has upgraded his uh, stock suspension to an H&R, which is give you upgraded springs and uh, the uh, shock absorber here. And up front, it's a pretty much a coilover system here. It looks really nice and it's pretty sick. But with that, what he needed to do is he wanted a little more control and with the Dialing in the so factory suspension, you can't really dial it in because you just there's only limitations of what you can do. So what he did is he upgraded to the Z1 beefier control arms and camber arms, and these are sick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out the old ones and now put a side by side comparison of uh, what these look like compared to the old ones. When you're removing some suspension parts, if you're not doing the alignment right away, do yourself a favor. You want to put everything to where the alignment was. Just make some lines on the washer. So when you go and put your suspension back on, you can put in the placement that it was so you're somewhat to what your stock alignment is. When the arm comes off, we'll put it on the floor and we make sure that we go with the same height and then all the adjustments will be done when you're doing the alignment. This will help you out. That way you don't drive your car on the road with really, really messed up alignment. Look how much longer you have to adjust it. Yeah, we have to so adjust So now that it. it's out. And that's what you want to say right now, right? When you put those on, you want to pre-adjust to them. at least that length right now. Yeah. When you're adjusting your control arms, myself, I like to know how big the bolts are. Have in mind that when you're doing adjustments, you want to keep the adjustments even. So if it's a half inch gap here, half inch gap there, that way you're not pulling all from one side. And when you adjust it, you do that. So in this case, we're going to start adjusting. Looks like we're we're there already. So you can always try putting a bolt through around this, and, yep. then, and then it lines up with both of them. Yeah, that's what I do. Any, I think any bolt will work, just as long as they line up. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, there you go. And it is important to see, so you have these somewhat as even as you can, because you don't want this one to extend it all the way out, and then this one all the way short, because it would you create binding, and it'll yeah. fill. And it, they Chris, will fail. Pretty yeah, they will fail because there will be more stress on one side, right? Yeah. So set one products, they, by the looks of it, they give you a good quality product. It's a long bolt. So you, you're going to have good, but good strength there overall, but you definitely want to make sure that you don't have this flash and you take this bolt all the way out. Yeah. You yeah. kind of even it out. If you do that, when the alignment guy makes an adjustment, all he does is moves the middle and adjust everything accordingly. And then everything goes out evenly or yeah. unevenly, right? Yeah. There you go. Now, once it's done, the Ramos is going to lock the uh, the alignment in, and then uh, it's ready to go back into the car. So the camber adjustment is just right there. And you can lock. You can lock this out now. Yeah, lock those out there. Or tighten it to its final position. We 
we're done with the camber arm for the one side, and now we're gonna do the, uh, the toe arm. The toe arm is actually the smaller one, and this controls your toe, of course. When you're doing these, you guys, I recommend just doing one arm at a time. Don't take it all apart, because you'll just throw it right out of alignment, and it's gonna be hard to put it back in, and the bolts won't line up. It's just gonna be a big mess, so just do one arm at a time. Put my grizzly on the bottom yeah so i don't have to remove the tire when you know have those in mind when you're setting up this you don't want to put the grease nipples where you can't reach them yeah. put in the bottom so you can just go under and grease it right so the z1 traction arms uh they're made out of like i think it's probably a these are uh, urethane, eh, Ramos? Yeah, you have an option with urethane, or you can go with the race application for so with um, uh, rigid, rigid uh, bolt type. Yeah. Um, on them, but um, if you're a guy that want to have a little bit of comfort like me, and you're not tracking your car, and you probably want to go for the comfort a little bit, just be aware that the other suspension with the bolt joint types, they are very noisy. Yeah. You can feel everything, so. If you're okay with that for everyday street, by all means go for it, they're awesome if you want to track. But if you want a little bit of comfort and not be too noisy, these are the ones yeah, you want. Yeah, because these are- one recommends this one's for- Yeah, it's urethane, right? Not rubber, right? Urethane, urethane. Yeah. urethane. Yeah. And the nice thing, they give you the Grease greasing uh, eyelets here so that you can actually grease them so it doesn't make any noise. Because after a while, the urethane does make noise too when you go over like curbs and stuff like that. Yes. Your alignment guy or the guy that's going to tune your suspension is just going to love you because he's, it just gives him a lot more control over the suspension. And uh, yeah, he's, he's going to have a lot more control on your suspension, you guys. So now that we finish this side, we're going to continue on to the other side. So one thing you really don't want to forget to do is make sure that you torque all your bolts, not just ram them in, right? Um, your camber arms, the uh, inner is uh, pretty much uh, 54 foot-pounds and the uh, outer one is uh, 65 foot-pounds. And on your traction arm, which is this one, this bad boy right here, the, um, this one right here is 54 foot-pounds and again 65 foot-pounds on this one right here. So you want to make sure that you torque everything properly. You don't want anything to come loose while you're driving for sure yeah. right yeah i mean those those tools can put out quite a bit of um you know torque on them but you also don't want to stretch the bolt to the yeah. point where you can shear them and they yeah. can fail while you're driving yeah. so since we're here it's not good and two loss is not good yeah since we're here and if they did opt to change the con the uh camber or the toe arm Ramos, what's the torques on that on on the toe arms um they're saying that you want again on the bushing side which is on this side here you want 54 and on the fork side the one uh, and this one the 154 as well too yeah yeah so that's if you guys decide to change that's if you decide you have to go with a standalone yeah. um, coilover suspension in the rear then you get rid of actually this arm and put a different one or yeah. you can just take it off and use the same one yeah so now that we're finished the rear ones we're going to move on to the front ones to do the upper control arms you do have to remove the uh, coilover or the strut and to get to that, you have to take off the brace. And they're all held on by 14s? 14s, yeah. 14s, 14 mils, and you gotta take the cover off there to get to the two 14s behind the windshield wiper blade there. For the um, control arm and ball joints, you're gonna be using pretty much a, a 14 a mil. Uh, your brake lines are gonna be a 12 mil. Don't forget to strap some of this stuff aside when we remove it, you break everything down. You don't wanna wreck your brake, your brake line, right? So make sure that you be careful with that. For your uh, lower um, bolt for the uh, coils is going to be a 19 mil, and for your soy bar linkage you're going to need actually a 17, and you're going to need a 19 uh, mil wrench to hold it while you take it off. This is what you're going to you're gonna need that is going to be required for you to remove this and remove the control arm. So the reason why you have to remove it is pretty similar to the GTR setup. Uh, if you look, the bolt is actually hitting the struts here okay. so that's the reason why you have to take the strut out uh, to get the upper control arm out of here you know this install would be actually really easy if the bolts came out 
If they were a little shorter, it'd be a really straightforward install. Just remove the two bolts and, and the uh, knuckle here, and it would have came straight out. But unfortunately, the bolts are too long, so the strut has to come out. Pretty shitty. Here's a comparison of the, uh, the factory control arm, and this is a Z1 uh, adjustable control arm, which is pretty nice. Output control arm, yeah. Yep. And it's a little, a little more heavier, but a little more beefier, but the main thing is we have more control on dialing in the suspension, you guys. Uh, again, they give you the option of, so that you can oil uh, the rubber, uh, no, the urethane bushings, so it doesn't make any noise, which is nice and all the dust boots. So from looking at this um, um, upper control arms, the adjustment is really tricky. So not like the rears where you can grab and turn that arm and both sides adjust. This one you have adjustment on the two back connections and on the front ball joint. So when you're installing them, you wanna get your height, I mean not your height, your length really close to stock. But just have in mind that to do the adjustment on the rear, your alignment guy pretty much will have to take this apart. So most of the adjustment is gonna be done on this uh, ball joint side. So uh, he's gonna have to take it off from the arm and then roll it pretty much and then turn it until you get the right camber that you want. Because to get this, you're pretty much gonna have to do everything again, right? Another word of advice is if you're doing control arms, you pretty much probably be best to do it while you're doing your suspension because you're technically gonna have to remove that coilover to get to this. So, word of advice, you don't wanna do the work twice. Get your suspension, get your control arms done at the same time. So for now, I'm gonna do most of the adjustment on the rear to get to this. And then when they're setting up my alignment, the alignment guy will be pretty much just touching the uh, ball joint side, because that will be the easiest to undo and um, adjust. Yeah. It was, so it would've been nicer if Z1 did these upper control arms are sim similar yeah. to the rear ones where yeah. you don't have to remove anything right and you can adjust it here yeah without right. removal would have been made a lot easier yeah, right? yeah you probably can put a picture of that the back one so you can see the, the the back ones have another rod here where you can just turn and adjust in and yeah. out so you know you can get your adjustment better but you know just know that for you to adjust here you're pretty much going to have to drop your whole suspension and you don't want your alignment guy to be doing that because you're probably going to get charged about three yeah. hours per yeah. side and yeah that's a lot of So it would have been money. a lot user more user friendly yeah. if we if they gave that option like the rear ones. For sure. So if set one is seeing this, you know, this is something to think about, you know, be kind of cool to have that kind of a control number where you can just adjust like the rear so. Yeah. But I mean the nice thing is they give you the bolt joint adjustment here, but still, you know, it's it, it would be nice to have that yeah. ability to adjust. Yeah. Cuz if you're at the adjust. track, it would have been a lot easier to <laughs> yeah. adjust on the fly. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 No, for sure. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the brake line, and that's a twelve. Uh, yeah, twelve mil, right? Yep. Next, we're gonna remove the ball joint with uh, two fourteen mils. Up next, you're gonna remove the bottom of the strut, which is a seventeen. Right, Ross? Yeah, it's, it's a, a seventeen. It's a, it's a nineteen. No, no, sorry, nineteen. Yeah. So for the bottom one, it's a seventeen, and you're gonna need a nineteen inch wrench to hold the other end. And voila. There she is, all out. Then we'll have to put some pressure on it. There it is. So the next step we wanna do is remove the coilover. That'll give us access to the two 14 mils that are stuck inside here holding the control arm in. And to do that, you remove the three 12 mils that are up top here. this to 54 foot pounds there you go you want to torque these ones in first before you put the stride in because if you put the stride in you can't get access to no. torque these two down so that's uh just remember do that first so guys so this is the area where if you're doing this alone at home you wish that you have a friend or you were smart enough and you offered a friend to come and chill with you for some drinks and beers or, or pizza but this right here for all Nissan guys, 370s, 350 GTR guys, this bolt is such a pain in the butt sometimes. Sometimes you do have to spray them if the ball joints are a little 
uh, they're, they're a little bigger. I've seen that happen on GTR, guys. I think that happened to you. And, and, and <laughs> yes, I had the same problem. And uh, you have to put a wedge there to open up a little bit. Uh, thankfully, this one is not too bad, but this is where you're going to need uh, the help of a jack. Because it, it fits. It just feels like it doesn't fit yeah, because you know. the alignment is not on. If, it's not straight yeah, on. If, if it's, it's not, not straight, it won't go in. And then good luck. <laughs> guys will start prying this, thinking that it's too small. Like I did with the GTR. I thought it just didn't fit, but it, it actually fit. It just that it's, the tolerance is like really, yeah. really minimal. Yeah. And um, what you'll need is, well, here, I'll promise, we'll, we'll yeah. actually show you guys right yeah, now. Yeah, and you don't need lubrication or anything. You just need yeah. to line it up good. But you'll need the assistance of a good friend, a jack and a post, or you can just lower into the car into a jack as well to bring the pressure up. But yeah. we'll, we'll try to put the camera here and, and you'll be able to see what we're gonna do. Let's see if I can put it here, Ramos. Should capture everything here. This is where you need that camera on the head, right? <laughs> I see some guys wear that stuff. The right? GoPro. Is that what it is, a GoPro? Yeah, GoPro. <clears throat> Okay, here you go, guys. Stay there. You ready? Yep. Is it running? Yeah. In a little more, in a little more, right there. Okay, ready? Okay. Ready? Yep. There it is. See how easy that is? Bolt in. <laughs> Not on. You can bring it here so you can see. <laughs> So once you, you have everything lined up, guys, you can see it just, it's supposed to just slide in. And then put your nut on. Obviously, when you remove the uh, tension, it's just going to get hard. But there you go. It just slip right in. <laughs> and then you don't forget to torque it. That's, that's when you have a friend to help uh, you. Yeah, and that's 58 <laughs> foot-pounds, I believe, too, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. After we'll, we'll torque that up. 54, 54 foot-pounds, yeah. There you go. And that's the trick of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it made it so much easier. Once you got the strut in and the control arm back into the uh, knuckle, uh, you want to just reinstall everything in reverse order as you took it apart. This is 54? 54. 54. Lower control arm is at 54. Well, hit that one really good. And the soy bar link kit, they won 86, which is crazy. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it for this week's vlog. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys learn something with your suspension. You will enjoy your car that much better if you have the proper setup. Your tuner or your suspension tuner will just love you that much more just because it's going to be so much easier. Your car will handle better, ride better, and you will just enjoy that, your car that much more. We'll see you guys in the next week's vlog. See ya. This is the one that is not here. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> According to, I mean, I'm OCD, but phone is more OCD, but apparently this is a real rookie mistake. <laughs> Tell us, phone, what are we supposed to do here? Look at this. It's upside down. So <laughs> yeah. we, were, we were just too happy and uh, too excited to put this uh, pretty baller center cap on and we just tapped it in without even lining, <laughs> lining it up, yes. <laughs>